Hey everybody, welcome back to this series on preparing Curse of Strahd for Shadow Dark. Uh, in this, this is going to be part two of my Ravenloft set. Basically, in this one, I'm going to be going through uh, Ravenloft itself, and uh, not how you run it straight out of the book, but how I'm going to adapt it for my game, or at least the beginnings of my process here, because I'm not going to go too far forward. We're not, my players are nowhere near uh, approaching Ravenloft yet, I think. But um, I'm, I'm going to start doing broad strokes preparation for Ravenloft itself, especially the random encounters and the zones. That's how I'm going to be preparing this, is going to be through random encounters and zones, rather than necessarily going room to room. I'll keep the descriptions from the book primarily, uh, but I'm going to redo the creatures and some of the trappings of many of the rooms in particular regions, so in zones of the castle. So um, that's what I'll be doing in this video. So here I have the Ravenloft Encounters um, uh, document that I had started in the other video, and I have uh, different zones of the the different uh, zones of the castle. So I have the main floor, the Court of the Count, the Rooms of Weeping, the Spires of Ravenloft, the Larders of Ill Omen, and the Dungeons and Catacombs. And that corresponds to the different parts of the map, right? So you have the main floor, the Court of the Count, uh, the Rooms of Weeping, uh, the Spires of Ravenloft, which go all the way up through the towers. I'm just counting that all as Spires of Ravenloft. And I think uh, it is pretty much. Um, and then I have the Larders of Ill Omen, and then the Dungeons and Catacombs. And I'm basically just going to divide um, I'll, I'll be doing random encounters, but I'll also be then dividing up uh, each of the zones into just a theme and like what's going on there so that the players can enter that floor and they can kind of get a sense of what's going on. So starting on the main floor, well, really starting with the random encounters. Okay, so as I said in my last video, I don't like a lot of these encounters, just generically, but also for my particular campaign. So for example, I'll, I'll go through them and I'll talk about why, why I don't like them necessarily and, and what I'm going to be doing differently. So. First of all, uh, when it comes to how often I'm going to be doing random encounters in Ravenloft, I think instead of doing um, every time the party enters uh, anything like that, right? I'm not going to be doing um, every time you enter an, un enter an unoccupied room um, and for every 10 minutes spent resting. Rather, I'm going to do it according to the Shadow Dark, uh, the Shadow Dark uh, rules for, for dungeons and crawling and random encounters. Um, and, and when things happen, all that. Um, so if I go to the Shadow Dark, I have the Shadow Dark PDF opened on the side here. Um, going back up through the random encounters, let's see. Um, hmm, probably should have had this open before. Uh, Shadow Dark maps, NPC names, rival crawlers, NPC qualities, adventuring site generator, rumors, something happens. Um, Uh, here we go. So, unsafe, risky, and deadly. Check every three rounds. Risky is every two rounds. So, unsafe is every three rounds. Risky is every two rounds. Deadly is every round. So, I'm going to remove that. And um, for a random encounter, I'm just going to do six, uh, a one in six of a random encounter when checked. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to be checking, for the most part, every three rounds or every two rounds. And essentially, that's every three rooms. Or for every 30 minutes they spend resting. Because an unsafe is three rounds. I'm thinking of a round is about 10 minutes. And risky is or you know one action going around the table. And risky is every two actions going around the table. I'm not going to have any zones in here be deadly where I'm checking every round. Even though the catacombs would make a lot of sense for them to be deadly, I think at that point, I don't want... Uh, that's where stuff's going to be really, really um, tense, and I'm going to have more set encounters happening at that point. So I don't think I'll have random encounters down in the catacombs. But in the rest of the dungeon, it's going to be unsafe and risky. So it's a 1 in 6 of a random encounter when checked, which is down to d6. If you roll a 1, um, you get that encounter. Um, and that's just Shadow Dark as written. Um, now, when it comes to the table that I'm going to use, I don't like bell curve tables. Um, and that's for a number of reasons. If you, if there's a really good video series of videos on these by Baron de Rapp over a dungeon masterpiece, where he talks about random encounter tables, um, and why in his view, a flat, uh, just a flat roll is better than a curved table. Um, I'm, I'm really in agreement with him on this because I think that if you have a, a curved table, you're more likely to get boring encounters. Whereas I would rather have my encounters be interesting. So what I'm going to do is just do 
uh, d6. Uh, d6, uh, let's see, when encounter occurs, roll d6. Now, I still might change this as we get closer. I might change it to the underclock die, where you have the d20 and you count down and something happens um, when you get to 20. I might do that. That way the players have this growing sense of dread um, rather than just a random encounter. So I'm, I, I am still going to um, perhaps use underclock die. I think it does work. I wasn't, I'm not gonna use it anywhere else in Barovia, but I might use it for Ravenloft itself. And I'll tell the players this is how we're gonna do it here. A separate sort of thing. So when encounter incurs roll a six, roll a d6. Now, a d6 table doesn't sound like it's very big, and it's not, it's just six entries, but you can do really interesting things with a d6 entry by mixing and matching um, activities and uh, reactions. So you add an activity and you add a reaction, and the, and the random encounter isn't necessarily just the same every time, even if you roll the same sort of thing. But anyway, Let's go through the, I'm going to go through the particular entries here, and which ones I like and which ones I don't like. So Esmeralda, I don't like. And the reason I don't like this is because the, the only reason you would use Esmeralda as a random encounter in Ravenloft is if the players go straight there and they haven't done anything else in Barovia, because Esmeralda is an awesome character, and you should use her elsewhere. She should be an introduction, she should be introduced to the party somewhere else in Barovia. She should be an NPC that they've interacted with, they've maybe, maybe a rival, maybe an ally, whatever but she needs to have been in the campaign well before they get here. And so if the first time you're introducing her is when she's just like this invisible like tapping them on the shoulder, uh, I, I think that's really late. So I'm gonna take that out. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely keeping Esmeralda as a character, but she's not here in Ravenloft. Now, if by some chance the players do get here and she haven't, they haven't encountered her yet, then I'll find a place to set her in the encounter. Maybe she's in um, the dungeons. Maybe she's in K10 in the dining room. Maybe she's in the chapel. And if there's a trap there or something that she's been trapped by, or maybe she's trapped in the sleeping gas chamber, like add add her into the dungeon in a meaningful way rather than just as, as a result of a random encounter. But you're probably not going to roll anyway with a two. Okay, um, Rahadin is another one that I don't think I want on this encounter, at least not on the base encounter list. I'll, I'll explain what I mean more there in a minute. I like the idea, especially as I'm going to be using him as sort of the big bad of uh, the pre-big bad distraught himself. Um, I don't want him on the table. Now, Black Cat is interesting, and it's one that I would, I will definitely keep. But I think what you should do is you should combine this with the Barovian Witch. And what I mean by that is, is you have the one, and then shortly thereafter you have the other. So it's a sort of a two-part encounter. If you have the cat, then it follows you around, and then the next encounter is the witch. Or maybe the, not the next encounter, but the one after that is the witch. So that way it's not just this random cat that runs by, but maybe have it follow you. And that can be an eerie thing. Maybe the players embrace it. Maybe they throw rocks at it, whatever. But make the, I'm also going to make the, the witch and a particular person, uh, an NPC. I'm going to give her a name. I'm going to give her a motivation, give her a secret. Why is she here? I'm not just going to have this be a random witch who, who attacks the party in a really weak fight. That's stupid. I'm going to have it be a, a character who's here for a specific reason. And she's you know lost her familiar, but she's trying to find it. And it's trying to find her. They got separated and now, and, and and once she's reunited with it, then there's something else she's looking for. And maybe she can help the party, maybe they can, maybe she'll hinder the party, whatever it is. She's certainly not just gonna be a random combat, which one Barovian witch is so weak. <laughs> it's just not almost worth having. The Broom of Animated Attack I'm also not including because I think it's a silly encounter, uh, which certainly works for a certain tone if you're going for Ravenloft in a certain sort of silly way. Or not even, shouldn't even say silly, but a certain sort of, you know, like funhouse dungeon sort of approach. Uh, this is a holdover in my mind from that kind of style of dungeon, and I don't think it fits with my particular kind of adventure. And the same with the flying swords. I, I don't mind this encounter, I think it's fine, but I'm just not going to do it. Uh, I think I have better things to do on my random encounter list, and so I'm not going to bother with that. The Blinsky toy and the trinket also are, I think, wasted opportunities. I'm, 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 I like Blinsky toys, and I'm going to use them, but I don't want to just use them randomly. I'll, I'll pick places where they might be. I'll, I'll come up with a list of Blinsky toys and um, put them somewhere where I think it'll be an effective little creepy scare or something like that. It's not going to be random, in other words. Uh, the Unseen Servant I also like. But I think one of the things that you should do with the Unseen Servant is you should make it be going to somewhere specific that is interesting. So that it's sort of a way for the players not just to have a weird random encounter where they pick up like a, a poison goblet and drink it or it's a potion of healing and drink it or something like that, you know, like, or a random spellbook or something like that. Or a, a 
uh, what is it, a tray of, of scones, right? But rather have it be something meaningful where it's leading them to a secret room or it's leading them to a back stair that they didn't otherwise see or it's leading them to X, right? So that if they choose to follow this thing, uh, it will lead them somewhere interesting. But it's a choice. They, they can choose to ignore it and let it walk by in this creepy way, or they can choose to see where it's going. If it's carrying a tray, maybe they'll follow it. Maybe it's an empty tray, but it's still carrying it. Maybe they'll go to see where it's going. So anyway, I think the Unseen Serpent's a cool encounter, but I, I'm not just going to make it like a random here, have this effect that you can choose to interact with or not. Rather, it'll be a, a directive one. Okay, if you follow this encounter, it'll lead you somewhere interesting. Similarly, I really like the Barovian commoners, but I don't think they're just guys with pitchforks here to kill Strahd. I think they're also, they need to be developed a bit. You can come up with a reason for them to be here. And, um, but it's a great encounter in that it does two things, right? It gives you a couple henchmen, and it also forces encounters to happen more often. So I think it's a really good encounter, so I'm going to keep it, uh, but I'm just not going to, um, I'm not, they're not just going to be like random angry dudes. I'm going to try to come up with a reason for them. I'm also going to combine this one with the Vistani. Uh, what I mean by that is I'll, I'll have it be the same entry on the table, but I'll roll, uh, like a D, you know, well, D2, right? A 50% chance, whether it's D4 Barovian Commoners or Vistani Thugs. Um, and the reason for that is that um, the Commoners, the Thugs, and then the Cultists, who I'm also going to add to this table, are all very different. They're all humanoid NPCs. The Cultists, the Commoners, and the Thugs, they're all uh, humanoid NPCs. But they each are different enough that when the party encounters them, it's going to be a different sort of role-playing interaction or just a combat, right? So the Barovian commoners are sympathetic to them. They're not, their their goals are not aligned, but they are friendly by, by uh, at least by, you know, the static, uh, by the, uh, by default. That's what I'm looking for, by default. The thugs are maybe uncertain by default, right? Maybe they're not friendly, but maybe they're suspicious or neutral by default. Uh, or maybe they're just, you know, curious, neutral, or suspicious. I might roll on the reaction table, but have one of those three things. Curious, neutral, or suspicious for the Vistani. Whereas the the uh, cultists are going to start off hostile. Maybe at best suspicious, but definitely hostile. So that when you run across the, the cultists, you're going to have to either talk your way out of a fight or just fight. Whereas with the Vistani thugs, it's going to be, well, are we going to fight? Are we going to talk? Are we going to pass by and not... What are we going to do with these guys? And the commoner, commoners are much more likely to just be friendly. All right, so the Crawling Claws, I also don't like. Um, again, in tone, I think it's fine and it's balanced. But I just think for my particular campaign, I'm not doing the tone there. The D6 Shadows, I really like. I'm keeping that. Uh, I didn't talk about this in the other video. I realized I skipped it. But I think the Shadows is a good encounter, and it doesn't need to be modified for Shadow Dark. It's it's good at, as is. It's a, it's a balanced fight in Shadow Dark, especially since they just stand there until they're attacked. And I think that's really good. If you just have these shadows haunting the party, standing in the background, being really creepy looking and describing them from time to time, it's a source of stress in my game for the players. And if they don't engage with them, that stress is going to continue to build as they notice them continually. So they'll, they'll then feel inclined to drive them away somehow, either by attacking or by using turn on dead or something. And, uh, and that'll be a resource. And if they fight, then they fight. So it's a good encounter. Uh, the Swarms of Bats, I, I also like. I'm keeping it. Um, yeah, keeping that one. Strahd Zombie, I'm not keeping because I think it is just... It's creepy and it's gross, but it's a really wasted random encounter. Right? Like, it's a sort of a wasted opportunity for it. A D4 Whites, I similarly am keeping. Now, you'll notice something. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm at six. That should be the whole table. Well, it's not the whole table. I'll, I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Um, I have uh, the giant spider cocoon, which I've talked about. I don't like it. Why is there a giant spider cocoon down here? The only place where you can find giant spiders in the entire castle is in the locked away hidden secret room upstairs. Why is there a random giant spider cocoon in an empty room down in the waters of Iloman where you could roll it? It doesn't make any sense to me. If there were giant spiders throughout, or if there were another possibility, if you could roll giant spiders on the random encounter table, then that would be cool. Like, what I would have done with this encounter to make it in flavor is I would have had it be, if you're traveling, it's a random spider cocoon, or, like, you know, roll a d4. On a 1, it's a giant spider cocoon. On a 3 through 4, it's a giant spider. Right? That would have made a lot more sense, but they didn't do that. 
But anyway, it doesn't fit my tone. I'm not having giant spiders in the castle, except maybe in that one room. I'm not sure yet, but even so. All right, so I'm removing the giant, the, the broken witch, because she's already on here with the black cat. Uh, the vampire spawn, I'm also keeping. Uh, and then Strahd, I'm going to say the spirit of. Now, this is a stand-in for anything else, because if Strahd has been awakened, which I think he will have been by the time they come, then it's not the spirit. It's actually Strahd. But he is, um, he is only... I'll just put, I guess I'll just put that for now, Strahd von Sarovich. Okay, so what you'll see on this table is that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight entries. But I have a d6 here. So what I'm doing is some, a variation of Baron de Rop's uh, zone random encounter table. So basically, as you leave the main floor, you add numbers to your d6. So the main floor is going to be just a d6. But when you go to the court, for example, the court of the count, you roll a d6 and add one. What that means is the first entry on the table drops out, but the seventh entry now is possible. But when you go to the uh, rooms of whaling and the larder, then you're rolling, you add two. So now the uh, first and second entries disappear, but the seventh and eighth are both possible. Then when you go up to the spire, I'm adding three. And that means that again, one, two, and three drop off, but seven, eight, and nine are all possible. And then down in the dungeons and catacombs, I'm adding 10. Or I'm adding four, I should say. So then one, two, three, and four all drop off, but 10 is possible. And that's really only for the dungeons because of the catacombs, I don't think I'm gonna be rolling a random encounter for the catacombs. So I might just take that up dungeon. All right, so. What that means is then the order of the encounters really matters. So I'm going to uh, order it properly. So we're gonna go, this is number one. Uh, we're gonna go over. So Barovian Commoners and Vistani Thugs is the first on the, um, actually they're not even necessarily Thugs, so the Vistani. Barovian Commoners and Vistani are, uh, or I just say Barovians and Vistani. There we go, Barovians and Vistani is number one. Number two is the Unseen Servant. Um, I'll just uh, actually. Um, number three is the witch cat. Uh, number four is the shadows. Number five is the cultists, which I hadn't added before anyway. Cultists. Uh, number six uh, is special creature, and I'll talk about that, or special encounter, and I'll talk about that in a second here. All right, seven are the whites. Eight are the swarms of bats. Nine are the vampire spawn. And 10 is Strahd von Zarevich. Okay, so here is my encounter table then. Um, and when, let's see, add one if the encounter is happening in um, the court of the count. Two if in the rooms of weeping or the larders of ill omen three if in the spires and four if in the dungeons um, all regions are uh, and this is all regions are unsafe except the spires and dungeon, which are risky. Okay, so what that means then is, um, uh, so I'll actually put this here. Yeah, there we go. So one through six of a random encounter when checked, perhaps it's under clock die. All regions are unsafe 
which is check every three rounds. Except for spires and dungeons, which are risky. Check every two. When an encounter incurs, roll a d6. Add one if the encounter is happening in the court of the count, two if in the rooms of weeping or the large of ill omen, three if in the spires, and four if in the dungeons. Oops. There we go. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> That's just 20 minutes of me preparing this little bit here. But do you guys see, hopefully, why I'm doing it this way? What this means is that when you're in the main floor, uh, you're, you're gonna you're gonna find things like the Barovians of the Vistani, the Unseen Servant, the Black Catch, the Barovian Witch, Shadows, Cultists, and a special encounter. Now I'll talk about the special encounter in a minute. But when you go up to the Court of the Count, suddenly you can't run into the Barovians and the Vistani anymore. They're not up here. But you could still run into the Unseen Servant, the Black Cat, maybe the Witch got up here. Shadows and Cultists would still be on this floor. And the special encounter, now we'll say that that's a different special encounter because it's on a new floor. And now the Whites, because there might be Whites up here. Uh, maybe roaming around through these back halls, maybe in the room with the accountant, maybe up here, maybe in this back area here. Whatever it is, there are whites in this, there could be whites in this floor. Then, uh, um, two, if we're in the rooms of Weeping or the Larders of Ill Omen. So if you go down here, then suddenly you can't get the Unseen Servant anymore or the Barovians of the Bastani. But you can still run into the Black Cat, the Barovian Witch, Shadows, the Cultists, Special Encounter, the Whites, and now some swarms of bats, which could be... You know, maybe he's fluttering around down here or something. Um, and the same thing up here in the Rooms of Weeping. You can have swarms of bats that come in through a window or that have been roosting in a, in a room. You can have uh, whites up here, obviously. You can have special encounters, cultists, shadows, and the Black Cat of the Witch, but you can't have the Unseen Servant of the Barovian Vistani anymore. But if you go up to the Spires now, you're not dealing with any of those first three. You have shadows, cultists, special encounter, whites, bats, or vampire spawn crawling about on the roof and stuff, and up in the towers and by the heart. Uh, and the same thing is true down in the, uh, yeah, and then down in the dungeons, right, you can run into Strahd. He can, he can appear if you're here. Actually, you know, come to think of it, I'm not sure if I want to add four. I might just add three and take Strahd off the list. Um, if the spires or dungeons. Yeah. There we go. So there's only nine entries on the random encounter table. Um, and that makes sense, too, because the spires and the dungeons are also risky. So this is where you can find the spawn. And it's going to be, you know, they're down here in the dungeons, uh, down in the cells. They creep out or into this room um, or up in the spires. So basically what this means is that as you go up through the castle or down into the castle, it gets harder. Because these encounters, whites, swarms of bats, vampire spawn, the special encounter, the cultists, and the shadows are all combat encounters, and you leave the non-combat encounters behind, at least the, the easy ones. Now, the special encounter is still potentially um, a random encounter. So, oops. Uh, still, I think. So, special encounters. Special encounters are uh, for each floor. Uh, main floor. Court. Um, rooms of weeping or rooms. Larders. Spires. Dungeons. All right, so what that means is a special encounter. So if you roll that six, then there's a particular creature or something that you're going to encounter on that floor that's different than all the other floors. So for example, um, even though Rahadin is in his lair in 72, um, you can encounter him in the larders. Rahadin and uh, Demon Companion. So that's that you can run into him in the, in the larders. If you roll that six in the larders, well, although it's not a six anymore, uh, because the larders are adding two to your roll, so it would be a four. If you roll a four now, you're running into Rahadin and his demon companion. So you can encounter him out here. Um, in other words, oh, you know, another thing I could do, actually, and I'm just thinking about this, is just make the special encounter floor dependent. So I could add cultists. Um, or I could say more cultists, right? So on this floor, you're likely to run into cultists and more cultists. Because now a five or a six in the larders is a cultist, because this is where they hang out. 
This is where the cultists are. I hope that makes sense. Now, I don't know all of these yet. I'm going to be waiting and leaving space for them. So I'll just put more cultists as the question mark. So these are just, this is an idea I had. I haven't yet fleshed it out about what who's going to be in what floor or anything like that. But um, I think that's going to be um, something. Now, the rooms of Weeping, I had this idea for the Wailing, which is basically like a Banshee or something. That's the special encounter in the rooms of Ill Omen, or in the rooms of Weeping, right? There's some horrible old thing, <laughs> this spirit, that is up there wandering about. Um, let's see, what else did I have? Um, that's basically all I have right here. Um, was the wailing for the rooms of, uh, of Ill Omen, and then maybe Rahadin or Cultists. Rahadin or Cultists and the Larders. That's really all I have for the special encounters for those floors. But everything else is gonna be, you know, on here. Um, okay. So that is pretty much how I'm gonna be doing random encounters. Um, oops. Now the question is, <laughs> do I want to do a whole video right now <laughs> on how I'm going to be adapting the different floors. Well, I can write a few things and I've still got a few minutes left. I know that in the Larders of Ill Omen, I'm not dealing with the headquarters of the cult of Strahd. Headquarters of the cult of Strahd, I know that. Um, Let's see. The heart of Ravenloft and its dread guardian. So I don't know what its dread guardian is. But that certainly is going to be the dread guardian of the spires. The dread guardian. I don't know what that is. <laughs> But that's what's, that's what's happening in the Spires of Ravenloft. The Rooms of Weeping. Where Strahd's Brides Repose. Rooms of Weeping. Strahd's Old Chambers. Yeah, something like that. Strahd's Old Chambers. And that's pretty much what they are anyway in the book. Um, the Court of the Count. Uh, empty and cursed halls of governance. So I'm going to make this like, I think these are going to be the various, um, these were the official rooms. I mean, and that's sort of, again, what it is. There's the Court of Accounts. You have this courtroom. You have this accountant's room. You have this sort of bed chamber thing. I'm just going to change that from a bed chamber, I think. Not leave it a bed chamber. Um, make 22 something interesting on each side. Uh, make 34 something interesting that you can get to, although it's secret. Um, again, this is just where the family, this is where he would have done business. And so I uh, make it more official. Make these turrets something interesting each. Uh, just build it up into a cool um, seat of power rather than kind of just this empty hall with this random bedroom and then empty turrets and things. Uh, build it into an actual... Uh, uh, but empty... Uh, the cult hasn't touched it. Uh, the main floor is pretty much the main floor and that's, I think, going to stay pretty much the same. I'm not sure what I would do with that one yet. Leave that one the same. Main floor, court of the count rooms of weeping spires, larders, and then the dungeons. Um, where the cult has been keeping its um, victims. Places of experimentation. And then, of course, we have the catacombs. That's not how you spell catacombs. That's how you spell catacombs. Boom, boom, boom. 
Um, and the catacombs are a place of terror, even for the cult, where the rides and spawn they Okay, now that, again, these are basically just descriptions that we could have from the book anyway. The main differences here are the headquarters of the Cult of Strahd and the Heart of Raven Loftus Dread Guardian. No witches. Okay, no witches. Um, Strahd's old chambers. Gertruda rests here. But of course, it might give Gertruda a vampire spawn. And I think by the time they get to her, she'll just be a straight-up vampire. No longer a spawn. Oh, and actually, you know, in, in my immortal using her stat block as a, as a vampire stat block. So she's much stronger. So Gertruda's up in the rooms of weeping. Um, so I guess the Wailing Banshee, maybe it should just be Gertruda. It's a cool idea, but Gertruda. Maybe I'll put that on the main floor. The Wailing Banshee. So there's the wailing thing that's moving around the main floor. And it's this horrible uh, voice uh, that can pass through walls and haunt and you know curse people and stuff like that. I don't know yet what, what creature's in the court. Um, Gertruda is up in the rooms. Yeah, up here. Um, the larder says Rahadan or more cultists in these various rooms back here especially and then spires are the dread guardian and then the dungeons don't yet know what's in here uh, some creation maybe and then the catacombs again I'm not sure what I'm, how I'm going to run this in Shadow Dark I don't think I'm going to use this map I think I'm going to come up with a new map that doesn't have this sort of big... I know this is iconic, but I'm really changing a lot of stuff here. So I think I'm just going to have these, this door um, and this uh, stair, which are the two ways into this area. Uh, I think I'm just going to have them enter into a different map. You know, there's a Dyson Logos map or something like that. Yeah, anyway, I'll have to think about that. So this has just been basically, I guess, the Ravenloft random encounters as I would change them. Um, without knowing a lot of details yet about uh, the story up here because, again, the, I, I try not to plan too far ahead in terms of the story. I know that the cult is here. I know that Rahadan is here. I know that um, there are going to be Verovians of Vistani here. I know that there's an Unseen Servants that are used by Rahadan to do things around the castle. I know that there's going to be a witch. I don't know anything about her yet. Shadows, cultists, whites, swarms of bats, and vampire spawns are all going to be here. Um, and I think I'm going to make particular encounters with zombies and ghouls and things around the castle, skeletons. Those will be room by room, because uh, I will go through and, and populate the rooms at some point. I might not do that on camera, though. Ah, who knows? I probably will. And then finally, um, yeah, the, uh, the final catacombs itself, which I'll have to think about. All right, guys, hope this has been interesting. Um, I'll let y'all go. Talk to you in a different video.